Super Bowl 58 finished last weekend, and with it, Patrick Mahomes won his third Super Bowl ring, his third Super Bowl MVP in only his sixth season, bringing up the question, is he going to become the GOAT? This is a question that's been on my mind. I've been thinking about it since well before this season. After he won his second, I thought he might be on pace. He is clearly on pace now, and so in this video, I wanted to go through and talk about his GOAT debate, what he needs to do to become the GOAT, what could be standing in his way, and how likely it is that it's going to happen. But before we get into the video, I want to take a quick second to ask you to please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. It really helps us out. If you're a fan of the NFL, you'll love this channel. We release multiple NFL-related videos every week. So please help us out, give us a sub, thank you. Now back to the video. At the end of the day, if you're gonna have any GOAT debate with Patrick Mahomes, it also has to include Tom Brady. Tom Brady, in my opinion, is 100% absolutely the GOAT, and I think almost everyone agrees. You might be one of those people who thinks the GOAT is Peyton Manning, or Joe Montana, or Dan Marino, or even Jerry Rice as a wide receiver. And if that's your opinion, that's fine. But I think most people think it's Tom Brady, and if we're going to put the best argument forth for what Mahomes has to do to become the GOAT, it's beat Tom Brady. So in order to start the discussion on where Mahomes stands in the GOAT debate, we got to look at the stats. I know this is a bunch of numbers, I'm sorry, but don't worry, we don't have to look at it for long. So just looking at it though, you can see that Patrick Mahomes has had incredible QB ratings, incredible QBRs, incredible touchdowns, interceptions, completion percentage, all these things throughout his career. He has six Pro Bowls. He has two MVPs. He has an Offensive Player of the Year. He's basically won everything you can win early in his career, along with the three Super Bowls we already talked about. Compare that all to Tom Brady, and all of a sudden, it seems pretty good. You look at Tom Brady's first six years especially, they don't compete at all with Mahomes. Yes, Tom Brady did have three Super Bowls in those first six seasons, but he only cleared 4,000 passing yards once. He never had less than 12 interceptions. He didn't have that great of ratings. I mean, literally his best season at 92.6 was equivalent to Patrick Mahomes' worst season in this six-year stretch at 92.6. But at the end of the day, you have to kind of split out Tom Brady's first six seasons when he wasn't as good and understand him for what he was. Really, at that point in his career, he was more similar to a Brock Purdy. And this is not me knocking Brady or Purdy. I think Purdy's fantastic. He's a great quarterback. He might be borderline top 10 in the league. And he's absolutely a quarterback you can win a Super Bowl with, just like what Tom Brady was. And you might be saying, if you're a big Brady fan, well, Brady had two third place MVP finishes in his first three seasons. Yeah, but Purdy finished fourth in the MVP race this year. So I think they're actually very comparable and not just because they were late round picks. Purdy has played very similarly to what Brady played like in his first six seasons. And that's very good, but not one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. Brady didn't really hit that elite quarterback in the NFL status until 2007. When he got Randy Moss and they went off going 16-0 in the regular season. Brady put up 117 QB rating. Absolutely absurd. 50 touchdowns. He took himself from being a good, if not great, quarterback to one of the best, if not the best, in the NFL in one season. It was absolutely incredible. And it's really sad that we didn't get to see that team really continue because he was injured the next season. And then Moss had kind of fallen off by the time we got to 2009. But either way, that's what happens. And so from 2007 onward, Tom Brady was one of, if not the best, quarterbacks in the league for every one of those seasons. But at the end of the day, those first three seasons were when he won three of his seven Super Bowls. But it wasn't just Tom Brady. Those teams had an absolutely ridiculously dominant defense helmed by Richard Seymour, Ty Law, Teddy Bruschi, Willie McGinnis, Mike Vrabel, Rodney Harrison, and led by their dominant goat of a head coach, Bill Belichick. Tom Brady was not the primary reason that these teams were winning. He was a very good player, but that defense was absolutely dominant, as we just talked about. And I don't think without that defense, they win any of those championships. Tom Brady was not the one carrying those teams. Not like when Peyton Manning won with the Colts, or when Drew Brees won with the Saints, or frankly, when Patrick Mahomes won at the very least the first two Super Bowls, with the Kansas City Chiefs, and probably the third two, to be honest. Patrick Mahomes 
led his team to those three Super Bowls. Tom Brady definitely led his team to the latter four Super Bowls, but he was more of an above average game manager. And I'm not saying that as a slight. Don't think of this as a slight. Game manager and above average game manager just means that he was a very good quarterback, a top 10 quarterback, but not a top five, top two, top one quarterback like he would become later in his career. But you might be saying, Drew, we're only looking at regular season stats thus far as well. We should really look at playoff stats. That's what makes Tom Brady the GOAT. That's what makes Patrick Mahomes one of the potential future GOATs. If we were only looking at regular season, you'd probably have to say that guys like Dan Marino and Peyton Manning would be much higher on this list. And I agree with you. So let's look at playoff statistics. If we look at Patrick Mahomes, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is just otherworldly in the playoffs. It's not even fair what Patrick Mahomes does in the playoffs. Four of his playoff appearances, he has over a 100 QB rating. He is 15-3 and three in the postseason and has multiple postseasons with just over a 70% completion rate. Absolutely insane number six years into his career. Compared to Brady, and oh my God, look at how many times he's been to the playoffs and how many playoff games he's played in. But at the end of the day, he also has only cleared a 100 QB rating four times. And he's only thrown for double-digit touchdown passes twice. That's actually the same as Patrick Mahomes has already done in his career. At the end of the day, Tom Brady has some great playoff statistics, but he's had some ups and downs in the playoffs. Obviously, his late career, he was exceptional when he was winning those four Super Bowls in seven years. But before that, in the middle and in the beginning, his playoff stats weren't that great. Look no further than his first playoff run. He completed less than 62 of his passes, for less than 200 yards a game with one touchdown and one interception. Yeah, he won a Super Bowl, but that does not scream dominant playoff performance. And he won Super Bowl MVP that year too. Let's not forget that. That was enough to win Super Bowl MVP. Now we do have to remember he was injured for part of the AFC Championship game, which definitely decreased those stats. But still, he was not a dominant force in those early playoff runs in general with two of the three Super Bowls coming where he threw for less than 200 yards per game. But as I talked about a little bit before, you really have to look at Tom Brady in silos, breaking out his career. And so I've broken out Tom Brady's career into three primary parts. His early career, when he was mostly an above average game manager, probably a top 10 quarterback, but maybe not a top five in the league. His next seven seasons, which was really six seasons because he was injured for one of those seasons in its entirety, where he was a dominant player winning MVP awards, but just wasn't able to get over the hump and win any Super Bowls. And then his final nine years, where he won four Super Bowls, an MVP, had a bunch of Pro Bowls, all at the age of 37 or older, which is absolutely insane. Compare that to Patrick Mahomes in his six seasons of his career, and that six-season run from Patrick Mahomes is comparable to any of these runs from Tom Brady. And I would actually care to argue that Patrick Mahomes' first six years exceeds the combined statistics of the first two eras we have here of Tom Brady. He has as many Super Bowls, he has as many MVPs, and yeah, he's three Pro Bowls short, but guess what? He's played three less seasons than Tom Brady had Pro Bowls in that time. He can absolutely catch up to that, no problem, and he likely will. The big factor for Patrick Mahomes is can he make up for Tom Brady's stellar late career? Tom Brady had one of the most impressive runs any quarterback has ever had in NFL history from the age of 37 to 45. I think in my lifetime, someone will be better than Tom Brady and will go down as the new GOAT in the NFL. I do not think that anybody will ever be as successful as Tom Brady was at age 37 or older. It was insane doing what he did, making five Super Bowls, winning four, winning an MVP, multiple Pro Bowls, And honestly, he came really close to doing even more than he did in that time with a dominant Patriots and Buccaneers team. The one thing Patrick Mahomes does have going for him if he's going to catch Brady is he gets to start at a much younger age. Again, I actually put Mahomes a little ahead of where Brady was after his age 36 season. And Mahomes has only finished his 28th season. So he has a lot of time to make up for the fact that Brady had massive longevity and was so successful late in his career. But if Patrick Mahomes can win a couple Super Bowls in the meantime, he should be able to catch Brady. So now that we've looked at Brady and Mahomes and what they've done in their careers so far, what does Patrick Mahomes need to do to become the GOAT? 
Well, I think he needs a minimum five Super Bowls. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of you out here saying that Brady has seven. If Mahomes doesn't hit seven Super Bowls, he can't be considered the GOAT. But I would disagree with that. And let's look at basketball to understand that. In basketball, the GOAT debate is Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Michael Jordan has six rings, LeBron has four, and that difference is a big reason why Michael Jordan fans put Jordan over LeBron. But if we were only looking at rings, we should probably give it to Robert Horry, who has seven rings. And maybe you're out here saying, yeah, but Robert Horry wasn't the star on any of those teams. Michael Jordan was the star, and as the star, won six rings. Therefore, you got to give it to Michael Jordan. First of all, I would care to argue that Tom Brady wasn't the star on the first three Super Bowl rings he got, so that brings a lot more into question. But if you want to make that argument, that's fine. Then I'd say Bill Russell. Bill Russell won 11 rings as the star player of the Boston Celtics. That's nearly double what Michael Jordan won and nearly triple what LeBron James won. So if rings and championships were all that mattered in sports, then Bill Russell would be the GOAT. He's not, I'm in agreement, it's Michael Jordan. But because of that, you have to understand nuance. You have to understand that it's not just Super Bowls or NBA championships that determine who the GOAT is. At the end of the day, it's more than that. It's how good were these guys during their career. It's how many other awards did they win. It's how dominant were they. It's, it's how much did they contribute to those Super Bowl victories. And so while championships matter, for quarterbacks especially, when they do have a massive impact on their team's ability to win championships, they're not the only thing that matters. And that's exactly why Tom Brady was not considered in the GOAT conversation four years into his career when he had three Super Bowls, but we're already starting to talk about Pat Mahomes in that conversation because he was so much more meaningful to these chief Super Bowl wins than Brady was to those early Patriot Super Bowl wins. And so because of that, I think that Mahomes needs a minimum of five Super Bowls. Now, five Super Bowls is not enough for me to just say, yep, he's got it, he's the GOAT, case dismissed. But five Super Bowls, if he can couple that with at least two more MVPs and probably at least another decade of continued success at the same level he's currently had it, at that point, I think I would put Patrick Mahomes ahead of Tom Brady. Now, this also assumes that Patrick Mahomes is the reason his team wins those two championships. If he's a backup or he's like a game manager, kind of like what Peyton Manning was in his second Super Bowl, then I'm not giving it to Pat Mahomes based on only five Super Bowls. He would need more to get that recognition from me. But as I say, five Super Bowls plus a stellar remaining career with a lot of longevity and yes, I would put Patrick Mahomes ahead of Brady if he were able to do that. Any less though, it's Brady. Were Mahomes to get six rings, I think it would depend how long it took him to get it, but I think it's likely that I put Mahomes ahead of Brady. Again, assuming he is the reason his team wins those six championships, he continues to have success, wins some MVPs, has some great seasons, I think that will be enough to surpass Brady if he's able to get six championships. For example, if he got six championships in the next three years and just decided to retire at 31 years old, done. I'm putting him as the GOAT. I don't care if he retired at 31 and Brady played till 45. If he wins six in nine years, over. And then if Mahomes were to win seven championships as a starter with at least one or two of those championships, him being the reason they win, similar like he has been in his first three championships, then case dismissed. It's 100% Mahomes, and I don't think anyone could argue that. I do not think Mahomes will have the same longevity as Brady. I don't think he's going to pass Brady in terms of some of the counting stats, like passing yards, like touchdowns. He does have an opportunity because he did start a bit younger. He thus far hasn't had to miss full seasons, and he gets a 17-game regular season for much more of his career. But I highly doubt he's going to be able to go into an age 45 season or anywhere close to that. So because of that, I don't think he's going to pass the overall statistics. But as I said, if he's able to meet those Super Bowl requirements and some of those other personal single season accolade requirements, that'll be enough for me to have him surpass Brady. To put it in perspective, if you literally just copied and pasted Mahomes' career, his first six years, for the next six years, he ends with six Super Bowls, eight Super Bowl appearances, four MVPs, four first-team All-Pros, two second-team All-Pros, and 12 Pro Bowls. It's over. He's the GOAT at 34 years old. 
If he retires, he's the GOAT. I don't care what happens the rest of his career. If he's able to do that, he's the GOAT. Done. Over. Which means he's literally already halfway to GOAT status at only 28 years old. So he definitely has a very good chance at becoming the GOAT. But he has to maintain a certain level of play. And there are some things that might stand in the way. So now let's go through some of the things that might prevent Patrick Mahomes from becoming the GOAT. We all know he could be but aren't sure if he will be. And the first is going to be mobility. Unlike Tom Brady, who was always very much so a stand-in-the-pocket passer, Mahomes has made a name for himself as a very mobile quarterback. Now, he's nowhere close to as mobile as a Lamar Jackson or a Michael Vick, and he's not even as mobile as a Jalen Hurts or a Josh Allen. He's more akin to the early careers of Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. And the question becomes, Will he be able to age gracefully like Aaron Rodgers, who was able to win multiple MVPs in his mid-late 30s as much more of a pocket passer? Or will he age more similarly to a Russell Wilson, who as he got into his early mid-30s, really fell off a cliff as his mobility died, he wasn't able to buy time with his legs and make throws outside of the pocket in the same way, and he just was not successful as a pocket passer or I should say isn't still successful as a pocket passer because he is still in the league. I think Patrick Mahomes absolutely has the ability to do this, but it's a really tough transition. What makes Patrick Mahomes so great is his ability to run around. And the offense he plays in, Andy Reid's offense, look at the quarterbacks who have helmed this offense. You got Donovan McNabb, Michael Vick, Alex Smith, who is deceptively agile with his legs. These are all guys who were fairly mobile and able to run the Andy Reid offense. If Patrick Mahomes doesn't maintain his mobility as he ages, who knows if he's able to operate within this offense? I don't know. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. I think he's a good enough quarterback, has the arm talent. He will be able to gracefully transition. But will he be as effective? That's something I don't know. Another reason Pat Mahomes might not be able to be as successful moving forward is someone we just talked about, Andy Reid. Andy Reid is 65 years old right now. He's going to be 66 years old by the time the 2024-2025 season gets underway. Fairly old for a head coach, and there's already talk about him retiring in the next few years. If Andy Reid, one of the best coaches in the NFL, retires, where does that leave Patrick Mahomes? Will he be able to have the same success with a different head coach, or will there be growing pains? That's something we obviously aren't going to know until it happens, but even before Patrick Mahomes came to the league, Andy Reid was always a very successful head coach. He's had very few losing seasons in his career, and he was a constant 10-plus win team with Alex Smith as his quarterback in Kansas City. A good, but not totally great quarterback who Andy Reid made a competitive team behind. The other thing that matters is what happens as some of the players start to leave. We've obviously seen Tyreek Hill and Orlando Brown and Kareem Hunt and a few of these other guys who were stars on this team leave, and the Chiefs have still been able to be a dominant team in spite those guys leaving. But what happens when Travis Kelsey leaves? Travis Kelsey has always been Patrick Mahomes' go-to target. I think with the emergence of Rashi Rice, the emergence of the defense allowing the Chiefs to really focus on improving the offense through the draft will allow this team to keep going in spite of Travis Kelsey likely retiring fairly soon as he is going to be 35 to start next season. Extremely old for a receiver in the NFL. But who knows? Maybe when he loses his number one target, he's not able to be as successful And when he loses his coach, there's definitely a risk that he's not as successful. So this is something that could hold him back from being the greatest quarterback of all time and the greatest player of all time in the NFL. A third reason why Mahomes might not be able to go down as the GOAT is the AFC. The AFC is absolutely stacked to a ridiculous degree with quarterbacks. This coming season, the 2024-25 season, They're still going to have Aaron Rodgers, who's going to be back from a torn Achilles. But beyond that, there's C.J. Stroud, Trevor Lawrence, Tua Tagovailoa, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, and Josh Allen. None of these guys outside of Aaron Rodgers have won a championship. I can't imagine a career where none of them are able to beat Mahomes at least a couple of times. And at the end of the day, all these guys are younger 
than Patrick Mahomes, minus Aaron Rodgers, obviously. And so with all these guys being younger than Mahomes, being hungry, these teams constantly improving, it's an absolute arms race in the AFC in a way that Brady never had. Yes, Brady had to go against Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, Phillip Rivers, Carson Palmer, some very good QBs. But the NFC also had some very good QBs at that time. Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Eli Manning, Kurt Warner, all these guys were NFC studs and it was very split. Compare that to today where the NFC's best quarterbacks are like Jalen Hurts, Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott, Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, Jordan Love. Like, I'm not saying any of those quarterbacks are bad. I'm not saying those quarterbacks can't be good, can't win Super Bowls. But you could argue that every single quarterback, or at least most of the quarterbacks on the screen here, are better than every single one of those guys. Which just shows you how good the AFC is for quarterbacks, how young the AFC is for quarterbacks, and how much competition Patrick Mahomes is going to have. The fact that he has won two Super Bowls in the past two years while playing all these guys in the AFC is impressive enough. Continuing to do that is going to be a monumental task. But if anyone can do it, it's Patrick Mahomes. And the final thing that might hold Patrick Mahomes back from becoming the GOAT is rule changes and luck. I apologize for the pun, I had to do it. But it serves as a little bit of a double entendre. Patrick Mahomes could go and decide to retire super early like Andrew Luck. And if he does and doesn't have the accolades, guess what? He's not going to be the GOAT if he literally doesn't win immediately like three more Super Bowl and then retires. If he retires early and doesn't do that, probably not going down as the GOAT. But beyond that, rule changes and actual luck do play a factor. Let's look at the overtime rules in particular. Recently, they changed the overtime rules to make it so that both teams will get a possession unless the opening possession ends in a safety. I think that's a much better rule. I think it's much more fair. I'm very happy that the NFL implemented this rule. Let me be clear. But it makes it a lot harder to win in overtime based on luck. And at the end of the day, in order to become the GOAT, in order to win seven championships, you need some luck on your side. Look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady went to overtime three times in his playoff career. Every single one of those overtimes, Tom Brady won the coin toss. Every single one of those overtimes, the other team never touched the ball. And every single one of those overtimes immediately led to a New England Patriots Super Bowl victory with Tom Brady as their quarterback. Imagine a world where he loses all three of those coin tosses instead. Does he only have four Super Bowl championships? Maybe five or six? He probably doesn't have seven. And that's a massive change. And let's not forget, one of those overtimes was against Patrick Mahomes. Imagine if that coin flip flipped and Patrick Mahomes was able to drive down and score. He might be at four Super Bowls already when Brady is only stuck at six. And it would be a much closer debate. But for the rest of Patrick Mahomes' career, he's not going to be able to have luck play a significant factor in his overtime games. Another rule change that's significant is adding the seventh seed in the playoffs. Three of Tom Brady's seven Super Bowl rings came with his team as the two seed in an era where there were only six teams that made the playoffs. That means that the two seed was enough to get a first round bye. Nowadays, if you get the two seed though, you gotta play an additional game. And yes, it's at home against the seven seed, Maybe if Brady had to do that in those years, he still would have won. But the rest is significant that he was able to get. And so that's something that Mahomes isn't going to have on his side. He might have to go through a longer gauntlet. Yes, one of Mahomes' championships did come as the two seed when there was only six teams that made the playoffs. He has benefited from this. But he won't be able to continue to benefit from this system. And so that's just one more hurdle that he has to cross in order to win that many championships. At the end of the day, I believe it is 100% within Patrick Mahomes' power to be the next GOAT and to supplant Tom Brady. But how likely do I think it is that it will happen? I'm gonna put the odds of it happening at about 60%. I really do think it's more likely than not that he's able to do it just because what we've seen from Patrick Mahomes is far and away the most generational talent I have ever seen. I never thought of Tom Brady as that much above players like Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, but I do put Pat Mahomes as that much above guys like Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow. 
And because of that, I see Pat Mahomes as a guy who can absolutely go down as the GOAT. He absolutely has the skill. He has the coach. He has the team. He has the defense now, which is something he didn't have in his first two championships. So I put it at 60%. It's still going to take some luck. It's still going to take some things to break, right? And it's going to take him maintaining his level of play for a long time. Obviously, we're not going to know the answer to this question for years, but it's going to be really fun having this debate for really the next decade plus as Patrick Mahomes continues along in his GOAT pursuit. Either way, that's it for the video. We'll see you all next time. Peace!